We're seeing a really robust economy here in the U.S., which is leading to more concerns that the Fed will continue on its tightening path. How does that really challenge your calculations for portfolio allocations this year? So to, to follow on from that point, obviously we have the CPI numbers uh, out of the U.S. this week. Um, the, the inflation picture for us in the U.S. is still very, very mixed. It's certainly not consistent with a rapid adjustment to the downside in interest rates. We don't buy that view at all. So there is certainly some scope here as far as the US dollar is concerned from a currency perspective. But what we're also focused on as well, you know, away from the US, because the US for us is not as attractive as it once was insofar as treasuries and also as far as US equities are concerned as well. So we're actually looking beyond uh, the developed markets right now into opportunities in the, in the emerging markets, uh, certainly from a, a fixed income and an equity perspective, we actually think that emerging markets will actually ride out this slowdown wave quite well, given how very, very well flagged the slowdown globally has actually been. But in terms of the portfolio allocation side, uh, we're still very defensive more broadly uh, on, on equities. We do see pockets of opportunities in the fixed income space because we are seeing inflation top out in certain parts of the world. But the earnings picture is still looking very weak for us. So on that bond versus uh, equity uh, balance, we're still favoring a higher allocation towards fixed income at this stage. We've seen a pretty slow kind of upward revision process when it comes to EM corporate earnings. Are you expecting that picture to pick up? And when you take a look at obviously, you know, not all emerging markets are created equal, where are you lacking those opportunities? Yeah, so this follows on a bit from the comments that we made a few minutes ago regarding Korea. What, what, what is quite clear is that if there's no pickup on the consumption side in China, we wait and see on that. Um, the labour markets elsewhere, though, are very, very tight. So um, we wouldn't be altogether that negative on the overall global demand picture. Of course, labour markets are a big lagging indicator. There are some signals that labour markets have started to roll over. That would be a really negative signal as far as markets that are very dependent on exports and are very exporter and aggregate demand driven. Korea being a case in point. So the way that we're playing it from an emerging markets perspective right now, it's, 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 it's quite clear and quite clean the way that we're doing this, is we actually do foresee commodities actually remaining quite well supported. So with that, the commodity exporters versus importers. It's an old game. It's an old, it's an old relative value trade. But we actually do think there's some scope here for those markets that are commodity exporters, as opposed to those that are either importers or that are dependent on global demand for exports. That's the, that's the real relative play between emerging markets right now.